There is another model in the OVS series. This new model is a 3 billion parameter unified model designed to perform multimodal understanding, text to image generation and image editing within a single framework. This is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. If this is the first time you are visiting the channel, I would request you to please subscribe and like the video. Now this is not the first time we are going to cover these OVS models. We have been covering them from the day one and they have been evolving quite impressively. This new model which is OVS U1 is quite interesting in the terms that they are trying to do everything in one go. If you look at its architectural diagram that tells you a lot of things but don't worry I'm not going to explain it to you right now. Let's first get this rolling because we are going to get it installed locally and then we are going to see how exactly this works. I'm going to use my Ubuntu system. My GPU card is NVIDIA RTX A6000 with 48 GB of VRAM. If you're also looking to rent a GPU or VM or CPU on very, very affordable prices, you can find the link to Mass Compute in video's description with a discount coupon code of 50% for a range of GPUs. So please do check them out. Okay, let's go back to our terminal. Our Conda environment is almost done here. And you can of course go with any virtual environment if you like or not. Let's git clone the repo. And you can find the link in video's description. Once that's done, all you need to do is to just install all the prerequisites from the root of the repo. This is going to take a few minutes. While that happens, let me also introduce you to the sponsors of the video who are Camel AI. Camel is an open source community focused on building multi-agent infrastructures for finding the scaling laws with applications in data generation, task automation, and world simulation. And everything is installed. Next up, all you need to do is to just launch this Gradio demo. And the first time when you run this, it installs flash attention and then downloads the model. And while it does that, let me take you to this architecture diagram and let's try to understand it in very simple words. So first, if you look at from the left, the model processes both text and image inputs. Text is converted into embeddings via a text tokenizer, while an image is processed through two parallel paths. First, a visual encoder for semantic information, and then there is a V or variational autoencoder for detailed visual features. These embeddings are fed into a central multimodal LLM which integrates the semantic information. The multimodal LLM output can then be directed to a text detokenizer to generate descriptive text or to a vision specific pipeline to generate or edit an image. So everything is happening in the same pipeline. The image generation and edit editing capability is powered by an advanced architecture as you can see here um, this whole refined output along with the detailed visual embeddings enters the visual decoder and then this features a double stream design where we have separate streams for semantic and visual information that are progressively combined this diffusion based process followed by a v decoder allows this ovis u1 to synthesize high fidelity images, effectively translating the combined multimodal instructions into a final visual output. And you can see that the model is being downloaded. So let's wait for it. And there you go. It is now running on our local host at port 7860. Let me run this. There you go. So we have image plus text to image text image and image into text. Um, they also have some examples in their repo. So maybe I will just select this one. And so it's an image plus text. So this is the image. Then we have the text like modify this image into a Ghibli style. And then let's click on run. It is running. Let's check the VRAM consumption in real time as it generates that image. So it is consuming, um, I would say just under 10 gig of VRAM, which is very decent, not bad at all. And the image quality is 
quite good as you can see. In the next example, I have selected one of my own images and I am asking it to change the color of shirt to red. Let's check it out. And there you go. So it hasn't really retained the proper facial features. But other than that, it has changed the color of the shirt and you know all the creases and all the contours are also present in this image. Look at the arm and everything and the whole posture is also there. But the only problem is a facial feature, but that is fine. Okay, let's try out a few more. Okay, in the next one, I have given it this image and all of these images are AI generated by the way. And I'm asking it that change the shirt in the image into an Asian bridal dress. And there you go. We have an Asian bridal dress. Next up, I'm asking it that to change this bear into a polar bear. Let's see how it goes. And there you go. Pretty interesting. It has kept some of the features. It's not exactly the same. Uh, I was expecting that it would just keep the background as it is. Maybe I can improve uh, the prompt, I'll say, while keeping surroundings as is. Now, there is not much improvement anyway, so but we can do quite a possible job here. Next up, I have selected this image to text and I am asking it to solve this equation. Let's see if it is able to do that. And it has done some things. If I go down, it has given this answer, which is correct. So it can do OCR too, which is pretty good. Let's try out one more for OCR. So I have given it this handwritten page and you can see that it has done quite a good job in terms of um, this handwriting. It has got almost everything right here. Pretty good. Pretty good OCR, I would say. Okay, let's try out the multilingual. Next up, I have given it this paragraph with different languages like Arabic, Hebrew, Hindi, Chinese, German, Portuguese, English, and Russian, and few others. Let's see if it is able to extract the text and identify languages. There you go. So it is... Aha, uh -huh. so it has just converted everything to English, German, Arabic, Russian. So it has identified, you know, four languages. I don't think so it can do Hindi, but other than that, it has done well. And if you are that language speaker, please let me know. It hasn't really followed the prompt. Uh, I just asked to identify the language, but it has done the translation. Anyway, pretty interesting. Okay, so this is pretty good, I think. And you can see that you can uh, also do the reasoning. Let me try one more. Then the reasoning one, I, am, I have given it this table. I am asking it which journal has the largest circulation and what could be the reason. It says it is a US pharmacist, which is correct, as you can see. And this could be due to its comprehensive coverage of pharmacy related topic, which may attract a broader audience of this and this. It's a very short answer, but I think it's a very reasonable answer. Next up, I'm asking it to convert this table into JSON format. Let's, let's see if it can do structured. It can, and it can do it pretty well. It's a very impressive model. It's one power punch in one model. That is good. A lot of things it is doing. And now let's test out the image generation from text. So I am giving it this cinematic film still of a rogue android in a neon lit LA. Shallow depth of field anamorphic lens flare and look at the quality it's pretty good can be improved but not bad at all and in the next one a teacup containing a swirling galaxy storm hyper detailed magical realism what do you think not bad really not world class very high quality but not bad at all seriously Okay, let's try to generate a human figure and let me give it the prompt. So the prompt which I'm going to give is this. That photorealistic portrait of a stunning blonde woman on a sun-drenched beach at golden hour. 
So I will let it run. I will just pause it to see if it is not an SFW and then show you. But it is actually quite good. I mean, it could be better, but you know, I think the mouth is slightly malformed, you know, the teeth and stuff. But there's a golden hour, but could be improved. I think it's not as good as I was expecting. But I'll, I think this area could be improved. And next one is a digital painting. Um, could be better, but not bad. I think it did have a passable job, if not world class. I mean, don't expect flux level quality from it. Okay, next up, I'm just checking that if it can do the text. Now, there's this cinematic shot of an AG 24 year old woman with a confident smirk. And it should say subscribe to my channel holding a worn out sign. So it cannot do the text as you can see um, from the result. But that's it. Not bad at all. I think for image to text and image plus text to image, it is quite good. Image generation needs a lot of uh, improvement, I believe. But other than that, I think they have done well with this 3 billion small model. Please like the video and share it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you very much.